Hi YouTube, welcome to another edition of Horror Hounds and this video is going to be, I don't know, a discussion if you like and you guys can get involved in the comments and we can have a chat and let me know what you th feel about this subject but in the last few weeks I've watched quite a lot of modern horror movies a lot of recent releases and I have to say the majority of them have been really disappointing I've been hit by a bunch of really kind of weak ass movies that were just very uninspired in in just what they were and it's kind of got me raising the question like what is it about modern horror movies that suck so much right now it's not all of them and i will get to a few good ones that that i like i don't want this to be uh too negative but on the whole a lot of them recently have just been very very underwhelming and it's a shame because horror, of course, is the greatest genre there is in cinema. For the last hundred years, we've had some absolutely wonderful movies. And for me personally, if you look at kind of like the 70s and 80s, let's say, you were getting like at least two iconic horror movies a year or excellent horror movies a year. Whereas now it just seems few and far between and if we do get a really great horror film it's kind of like a special event like wow they actually managed it so yeah i'm just uh, i'm just wondering at the moment what is it about modern horror um that's missing the mark now i'm going to get one thing out of the way and briefly address this garbage which i have covered on my channel i don't want to talk about it anymore i hate everything about it i've already said it's completely unwatchable I don't want to go there again. So that movie aside, <laughs> I would say in recent times, the, the, the two movies that strike me the most as being searingly unlikable was uh, Talk To Me and Saint Maud. And let's start with Saint Maud. I just found that one to be such a dreary movie. I felt like the creators, the creators of that movie were kind of going out of their way to make that such a chore to get through and they succeeded in, in that respect. But St Maud was so dull, there wasn't any moments of levity in it, it wasn't entertaining, I'm still not too sure what they were getting at. And I like horror movies that play out on a subtextual level, I like a slow burn horror film, but that one just seemed devoid of anything that would make you want to stick with that story and find out what was going on. It was so hard to get through and just such a negative viewing experience. I, I really disliked pretty much everything about St Maud. And I did go into it with a degree of, uh, of intrigue, but that was quickly kind of just stripped away as this, uh, frankly, boring movie slowly played out without giving anything to re reward you as a viewer so it was a shame and then talk to me oh my goodness talk to me must feature the most unlikable teenage characters that i've i've ever seen in a movie i just hated every single one of them and it wasn't even like they were overly annoying they didn't even bring anything like that in terms of their character they were just unlikable and uh I didn't like the movie, I didn't like the story, I didn't like the idea of this monkey's paw being used as a party trick and them kind of seeing how far they can take it, kind of something akin to like flatliners. Didn't like that, plus because I hated the characters so much and just recoiled every time they are on screen, I didn't care what happened to them if they lived or died or got possessed or anything like that. It was a very, very unlikable movie. Uh, which mainly stemmed from just the horrible teenage cast. So uh, both St Maud and Talk To Me were bitterly <laughs> disappointing viewing experiences for me. And both got a lot of critical acclaim, it would seem. Uh, they got a string of positive reviews and, and uh, things like that. So I was thinking that I was in for some pretty good modern horror movies, but oh no, not at all. Um, I don't know if I'll ever watch either of those again they were just uh, just so not enjoyable and then we come to other movies so something like five nights at freddy's now i wasn't actually aware of the game i'm not much of a gamer so i didn't know that was a thing but i remember seeing this i saw the poster and a bit of the trailer 
and thought it looked really good. Thought it looked like a fun time with these kind of cool, big animatronic creatures that were going around killing people in this sort of uh, old factory type place. And I really wanted to see it. And I tried to actually get my dad to go with me and watch it at the cinema. I thought that might make a fun Friday or Saturday night. Uh, it never happened, which was probably a good thing because I really would have felt bad uh, <laughs> making him sit through another dull and uninspired horror film. This one, Five Nights at Freddy's for me, just focused way too much on the boring family drama and the sort of the custodial relationship thing that was going on with the, the guy and his um, his young sister. The the Freddy's place and the animatronic creatures very much seemed like an afterthought and didn't do much in the movie at all. And when they did, it was very just standard by the numbers kills, a lot of off-screen kills, no real gore or violence. And I, it's a shame because I thought there was a lot of potential with that. I would have liked to have seen them thrown a lot more varied characters in that, have it take place more at Freddy's and just have these animatronic creatures go after people and kill them off one by one in a number of increasingly bonkers death scenes. It's, I mean, it's not... It's not rocket science, it's not too much to ask within the horror genre. But we just, just didn't get that. And I felt that they, they dropped the ball with a, quite a cool premise there and just could have thrown so much into it. So, again, Five Nights at Freddy's. I thought that had fun written all over it. It's another big disappointment. And then, of course, there was Exorcist Believer, which was just dreadful and... I could spend the next two hours berating that one, but I'm not going to give it the time of day. There's a number of quite hilarious videos on YouTube of people saying exactly what they, they think of that movie. But that, that, that one just reeked of Hollywood trying to play the easy card and and uh, run off the back of what I think is the greatest horror movie ever made, but doing it in a real lazy and uninspired and quite frankly insulting way um so yeah that one was truly awful then we come to night swim which i watched just the other night actually and again this is one that i was looking forward to night swim kind of a cool title it's got wyatt rustling who i was a fan of and the the notion of a haunted swimming pool is actually pretty novel. Again, it's I, I like the idea behind it, but it just had no depth to it, no, no pun intended. And really, I felt they struggled with the premise in order to pad it out into this kind of 90-minute movie. I mean, there's only so many scenes of someone overreaching to try and get something in a swimming pool that I can watch before it starts to get tiresome. And repetitive the scary aspects of it i just did, didn't land with me they were very weak again very uninspired and everyone's kind of because of the plot everyone's life seemed to revolve around taking a dip in this swimming pool which just felt silly and and didn't feel organic so again just a lot of a movie that missed the mark uh, in a lot of ways uh, and ultimately just just wasn't scary so um that that's one i think perhaps as an anthology maybe something that was like 30 minutes long that would have worked really well as a, as a shorter segment within something like that but as a full-fledged uh feature-length movie uh night swim just I, I think they struggled with that one as a premise um to make that kind of a viably scary horror film so another one that i was disappointed with unfortunately and then I watched The Last Voyage of the Demeter, which I was, again, really interested in seeing. I was looking forward to this one. It's taken from a chapter within the Dracula novel. So I thought, great, some strong source material there. Um, but again, same old story. I didn't kind of like what they did with it. Uh, there was a couple of things I did like with this movie. I did like kind of that it was set on this kind of old rickety ship. Um, you could almost smell the, the salt water in the ocean in this one as the film played out. I thought they got the tone of that one pretty pretty spot on. But thinking about it, they were trying to make a, a two-hour movie from you know one short section of a book, which kind of should have been a bit of a red flag 
as it was. Now, again, I think they struggled with that. There was a lot of kind of unnecessary things in this one. Maybe too many characters. Characters I, I didn't care about. And, uh, yeah, it just seemed like they were kind of finding a reason for this film to happen, uh, if if that makes sense. I think it, it worked a lot better just as a a, a moment within the, the, the whole Dracula story. And I was really looking forward to seeing the vampire, which kind of didn't do a lot for me either. I was, although it's based on Dracula, I was expecting kind of like a, a Nosferatu type character, probably because I think that one's very iconic when he sort of pops up on the ship in Nosferatu. And what we got was kind of a, I don't know, a dark sort of CGI kind of vampire that flies around a lot and is actually quite hard to keep track of where he is. And what he's doing. He I didn't feel like he was a prominent character that brought any kind of threat or stole the scenes in, in any kind of way. Again, very underwhelming. I wish they would have developed the vampire a lot more uh, in in this movie. Uh, so yeah, again, and and because this was taken from a chapter within Dracula, this one was difficult to um sort of I didn't look forward to any kind of climax or wasn't too interested in where it was going. And they did try to end it in a kind of a, a, a rousing, triumphant way. But it's it's part of a much larger story that we're so familiar with. And I think the film really suffered for that. And it just didn't really mean all that much to me. So, yeah, The Last Voice of the Dementor, not a terrible one. But again, another modern horror film that for me personally missed the mark. And then I watched Imaginary. Oh, and this is the one that really kind of tipped me over the edge and made me ask what on earth is wrong with modern horror. Uh, this one kind of broke me in a way. This one was so bad. Dull, boring, completely uninspired filmmaking. Uh, lazily cliched. I could sense where everything was going. Literally just by the book, insert standard horror trope here, filmmaking. And it really irritated me. Uh, so this one is uh, centres centers around this young girl um, who's a pretty annoying kid as well. I hate to say it for a little girl, but she's a pretty annoying kid, which is the death knell of any horror film. And she has this teddy bear, which is her imaginary friend. But there's more to it than that. And it has some dark connotations and leads into sort of this weird... Uh, imaginary world but believe me I doubt you will care uh, after so long of sitting through this this really boring film uh, on the whole it's just uh, as I say very very tiresome and uh, nothing nothing new to see here in its defense it does kind of ramp things up towards the end maybe the last 20 minutes half an hour it goes a bit bonkers as we enter into this weird nightmare imaginary world but by this time i'm just i was so bored and deflated and frankly annoyed by the lack of spark and creativity that i didn't care at this point and this is one that i had heard bad things about this one i'd heard a lot of negative reviews but i thought no i'm going to give this one a chance it looks kind of cool i think i can enjoy this one but no this one really did me this one just beat me over the head with a a boring stick and uh and yeah i didn't like this one at all and as i say this one really got me kind of thinking what is it with with modern filmmakers and their inability to really push the boat with modern horror so as i said there are a few modern horrors that i did think were pretty good the genre certainly isn't dead and i'll i'll focus on that uh towards the end because I, as i said i don't want this to be an overly uh, negative video I'm not particularly about that on this channel um but uh, but yeah like I say I switched imaginary off and was saying to myself what is it about filmmakers why can't they make you know a a genuinely iconic horror movie and uh I, I often find myself thinking this but kind of where are sort of the uh where are the Peter Cushions and the Christopher Lees and Vincent Prices where are kind of the uh the reliable um, sort of uh, actors and actresses that really brought this genre to life and gave it some kind of, uh, gave it class and gave it validity. I'm, I'm not sure if we have kind of any modern actors that you can particularly turn to and think, right, what is their next 
uh, horror venture going to be which is a shame I'd, I'd love to love to sort of have more people like that we've got some of the old greats that are still around and um, people like that Kane Hodder and, and Robert England still popping up in things but it very much feels like a bit of a novelty uh, addition to a film rather than kind of the the hefty performances of that Christopher Lee used to used to give um, or if you go in more kind of uh, in in sort of a different kind of um uh, countries and things you had like your Paul Nash's and people like that as well so we always seem to have like a bit of a plethora of of strong established talent that was involved in in horror movies I'm not sure if we had that as much nowadays in people like Eli Roth he's still churning out some pretty good horror films but he just seems to do them on kind of a as and when basis um his, his movies come out and I enjoy them but he's he doesn't churn them out like um like sort of like John Carpenter or, or Terence Fisher or someone like that would. I'm also not finding a lot of movies scary anymore now. I, to be fair, I've never found them all that scary. I, I think from watching them as a kid, it sort of desensitises you somewhat. But a lot of movies, a lot of old movies, I mean, something like Texas Chainsaw Massacre doesn't scare me at all. But you, I, when I watch that, it does have an effect and sort of really makes you... Uh, understand the terror behind it if you will if you're not particularly scared of it yourself you certainly get that terror and dread coming through and i very rarely get that with a lot of modern horror films some have done it some of the more people focused ones have done it because they're more believable i guess but even something like uh, as i say imaginary um which is a, on a more supernatural scale which used to scare me quite a bit that was so lazily done i just wasn't scared at all and then that one you can almost see the filmmakers you know drawing the dot to dot process of making a horror film so yeah i don't find many of them are willing to push the vote out in terms of of scariness or or daring content that maybe is a bit different and takes us down some uncomfortable routes a, a few of them still will and we've got things like terrifier which seems to be pushing the vote out with blood and gore which is glorious to see um but usually you don't see it all that much now which is a shame and another thing that i've kind of noticed as well is i, I don't think there's much content for iconic status there is you know, a little bit kind of like um bill skarsgård pennywise art the clown i think are going to be quite iconic as time goes on but again if you look at the 70s and 80s the characters and the things that were created, such as your Leatherface, Michael Myers, uh, Freddy Krueger, <clears throat> uh, Gizmo from Gremlins, Ghostbusters. Uh, the, uh, lots of film movies came out, one after the other, which have stayed with us and have become iconic and timeless. I don't see that happening for a lot of movies nowadays. And to be fair the, to the filmmakers, in this day and age, where we have kind of seen it all, we're quite a cynical audience. That is a hard thing to do. But I think you know, a bit of imagination and uh, and things like that uh, would um, would go a long way to uh, to sort of achieve that. I'd like to see a lot more horror antagonists that have quite a distinct look, um, you know, maybe like a cool mask or a cool outfit, something like that. I think that would help. But a lot of them, I think, are quite watered down and therefore a lot more forgettable than the movies that we used to get. I don't know. You know, let me know what you think on that one. But, uh, yeah, it's hard to imagine a lot of modern horror films now. It's hard to imagine which ones of those would become iconic. Uh, I'm not sure if all that many of them would, unfortunately. But as I say, it's not all bad. There are still some good modern horror movies out there. I don't want to be seen to be uh, completely pooping on the genre because there's still a lot of movies that I, I enjoy. I mean, last night I watched um, Lisa Frankenstein, which, to be honest, wasn't really my kind of horror movie, but there were things about it that I liked, and I think it had a good level of creativity and effort within that one. I really liked the cinematography and the colours of that one, and uh, it was very kind of very 80s, very Tim Burton-esque. It took place in this neighbourhood that I could imagine being the same neighbourhood as, like, Edward Scissorhands. So... Yeah, although not not quite my kind of movie, it definitely had a charm and a kookiness to it, which I appreciated. 
but I also enjoyed, I enjoyed Thanksgiving. I, I, I thought that one was a good one. I liked how it harked back to a holiday themed slasher movie and it had some good kills as well. I enjoyed Scream 6 for what it was. I thought that was a pretty decent entry uh, into the Scream franchise. I thought Smile was good. You know, the ending got a bit silly, but on the whole, that was one that I enjoyed. Those garishly smiling characters are never not going to be creepy. And I'm even warming to Halloween Ends, actually. I've come to accept that for the movie that it is. And upon doing so, I've actually come to really enjoy that and, and what they did with the movie. So I even had a bit of a positive turnaround on that. So there is still plenty of horror movies, modern horror movies coming out that uh, that are definitely worth seeing. It's just I've had a string of them recently that have really kind of made me hang my head and, uh, and, and despair a little bit for a number of the ones that come out. But let me know what you think of this, guys. Uh, as I said, I don't want it to be too much of a downer. I just wonder if anyone else has experienced a similar feeling, a similar string of bad horror movies. Uh, let me know um, what they were and, and what you think of them. And maybe some of the movies that I said you actually enjoyed. Let, let me know if that's the case and let me know what you enjoyed about them. I'd be really interested to know that. So, yeah, so a uh, little kind of low-key rant over. Um, I hope you enjoyed that for what it was. Um, and again, just let me know what your feelings are on this one. It'd be interested, interesting to get a bit, bit of a conversation going. So thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for more videos.